Okay, this is a piece of Hong Sung jade. It's called actually magnetic jade. This thing has been spinning for a while and I suspect the string has a lot of twist in it. The string is about oh three feet long or so, a little shy of a meter and had quite a bit of torsion, torsional twist in it um, that has been spinning probably for probably three or four minutes and it's gotten slower and uh, I kind of slow the motion down because if it spins too far one direction it won't stop it'll uh, go the other direction and spin for a while eventually winding itself down but anyway the thought is that because jade has magnetic properties it will make an excellent compass so this is an idea that I had I borrowed some thread some nice thin thread and this is a piece of Hong Shan jade that um, I've acquired some time ago and um, it's of a woman giving birth that's a bit irrespective of the point uh, um, it's being used right now as a test to test its magnetic properties uh, as a compass and if the uh, legend holds true uh, feng shui compasses pointed south not north so my thought is if the head of this figurine points south then it's going to be uh, matching the uh, legends of China so it's getting very slow now and it should eventually slow down to a creep and stop and reverse itself and go back the other direction eventually becoming uh, something or somewhat uh, in equilibrium and the most magnetic strongest pull would be the Earth's magnetic field. Now the lay, the lay line, the uh, north line there on the piece of paper was draw, just hand drawn on the paper and then aligned using the compass in my little phone, cell phone. So it's quite accurate, it's to within a degree and what we're doing now is slowly letting that Hong Chan jade figurine come to a stop and see if it points one way of the direction on the north-south magnetic line of the Earth's magnetic field. So far it doesn't seem to be wanting to do anything. So this is as good a test as any. If it doesn't point to the north or the south, then the whole thing is wash or it's not magnetic jade. We have to try it on another piece. All things are um, possible. It looks like it's coming very close to being stopped here. So we are going to wait for it to slow down, come to a complete stop, and just see what direction it's pointed. With a, with a one meter uh, thin sewing thread, which is tied to the hole in the center of the back, um, it should point one specific direction or another. It looks like it's doing something. There we go. It's being pulled. That is really right on the money. Look at that. It's going to pass a little bit. If it slows down and comes back, that head is pointed due north. Look at that. Now, let's go. It's slowly shifting back. Does that mean that's pointed to the north? I'll bet you it is. Look at that. Well, we don't know yet. It's still going, it's still doing something here. That's kind of 90 degrees from where it should be, but we're just going to let it do its thing. Now, legend says that head should be pointed south, not north. Feng Shui compasses pointed south. So the ley lines were laid out on the north-south axis, 
with the head pointed towards the south. So far we got nothing here. It's just pointed in some ab abstract direction. But it's slowly coming back, so let's see what happens. Well, it's coming back. That's really interesting. We don't know yet if it's just part of the magnetic structure of the, of the, of the Earth, but the magnetics of this specific spot were tested with the telephone compass, and uh, it uh, should provide us a good, accurate reference to what this jade should do. Okay, getting very close. That head is almost due south now. If it's gonna stay there, spinning back ever so slowly and it's just wait for it to stop it's in full suspension now that string's not touching anything slowly moving it's very very unreactive it's very slow to react So yet, we don't know any proof positive of anything yet. Now we're due north, continuing to swing on past. It should swing like this for a little while, very, very slowly, slow down, and point in one specific direction, and if it's random, the torsion of the string will determine where it is, but that string is long enough, one meter in length, or just short of it anyway, probably 80 centimeters, uh, without touching anything from the source. And uh, it looks like it's coming very slowly back. Consistently that head's pointed north So we want to just let it do its own thing. Okay, on this swing, it didn't go quite as far. It's stopping, it's slowing down. Okay, if it is reactive, it should come back. It's doing something. It's being pulled. is pointed due south. Let's see if it sits there now. It's coming back slightly. Slowly, slowly it's coming back though. That cookie after this experiment will be promptly crucified as an offering to 
the magnetic gods, it will become history, a sacrifice to the experiment. So don't, don't fret over the cookie. If you don't see it, it's because it doesn't have any calories. Anyway, 10 minutes into it, the uh, Jade Bennett is beginning to slow down. The head generally pointed to the south, swinging slowly. And not specifically enough to tell that it's being influenced by the Earth yet. Very, very weak response. And I would say if it stops there, that's a totally, totally unresponsive piece of jade. pretty much it. It's completely perpendicular to the ley lines. Oh, it's swinging back again, very slowly. stop with its head generally pointed towards the south. No, oh, it's swinging back just a tiny bit now. Sorry, that cookie's distracting you. Too bad. Well, unless we got further evidence, I'm going to say that's not reactive. Now, supposedly, the Chinese compass was invented or discovered around 200 BC, just promptly after metal, um, iron, was introduced to China. And they discovered by stroking it with a uh, lodestone, it would magnetize the needle. And when floated, it would point in a specific direction. Uh, they came to think that south was forward and north was backwards. So that's how their compass was originated. We tend to think of it in European cultures as north being up and south being down, but the Chinese were the other way around. Very, very slow to stop. It has to kind of work itself out. There's nothing we can do to help it. That's not very indicative of a compass. 
pretty abstract, pretty conclusively pointing off at some random weird space in in the universe. Well, it stopped, and the head <coughs> is pointed south, roughly south. It's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. I'll bet you it looks like it's slowing down now. run it out 20 minutes here and we'll just keep it going and uh, I'll give you an overhead shot here in a minute when it stops and that way you can compare the north arrow on the paper to the alignment of the, the magnetic jade of figurine that way you'll be able to tell from an overhead shot the true direction of that piece of jade. Well, look at that. It's pointing south. That head as predicted, it's heading south. And it's slowly swinging back and forth. But I'll bet you it's not very, it's not very um, reactive magnetically. So its attraction is very weak. But that head is being pulled south. We'll cut it off at 20 minutes here. In about 19 minutes I'll get up and show you the angle between the jade piece and the north arrow on the piece of paper. Okay, it's pretty much slowed down. It's at 18 minutes. It's just about reached its, its peak here. Um, I'm going to get up and give you an overhead shot. There's a close-up. I'm going to go up above. Now you can see, let's get real close to that string without touching it. See that? That head is pointed south there. Very slowly winding down to pointing south. We'll cut it off at 20 minutes. Call it good then. But look at that. That old head is pointed south. It's 19 minutes. Still swinging back and forth a little bit, but I'm not sure this would be very terribly uh, efficient at being a navigational device because along the Silk Road there were great stretches across the Gobi Desert and the inland swelts and, and grasslands and stuff. They needed a way to navigate across those vast open expanses uh, during the day. Uh, because during the night, of course, you can't hardly see. So they would have to have a way to uh, walk the length of the Silk Road from the Baltic area, the B Baltic Sea area, east into China along the Silk Road. And there were abundant num number of routes that they used 
But they had to have a way to stay on course so they could just wander aimlessly out in the Gobi Desert, which is pretty desolate stuff. Look at that. That is south. It's 20 minutes. Uh, some current of air or something hit it and pushed it around. Okay, there's a shot of the head off to the right of you there. It's slowly swinging back. And it's a minute, almost 21 minutes. And we'll cut it here because that old head is pointed south and it's consistently pointing south. So there you go.